Hi, this is Ashley Davis from Helituning.com and today we're having a look at the Griffin Extreme Heli Regulator. This is a voltage regulator for 3D or F3C helicopter use uh, and it's manufactured by Griffin and it's the GVR7020 model uh, and I've got it here bagged up as it came supplied to me. If we take the contents of the bag out, slide this out, like so. Okay, so we've got a, uh, a manual, all printed up in English, it's very readable. Um, I'll come back to that. The other stuff that we've got here is the regulator itself, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, and this bag of bits here. Now, in the bag of bits, if I just empty this out, Okay, so the first thing is that we've got a pin flag here. So this is the, you activate your regulator by pulling this pin out, which turns on the voltage. So as you see there, it says remove before flight, because that actually turns on your, your regulator and provides power to your receiver and servos. And then this is the thing that it plugs into. So this little pin here just goes in there like that. So when it's plugged in like that, the regulator is off. The other end here plugs into the regulator itself and then just before you want to fly you just actually grab the ribbon or the pull here and pull it out and then it powers up and you get a little LED comes on uh, on here and that's your machine powered up and ready to fly. The other stuff that was in that bag, these are just the uh, connection cables for connecting this up to your receiver so you can run voltage between the regulator and your receiver and these are really quite chunky cables on here as well so these are designed for carrying uh, a good amount of amps from the regulator to your receiver they're not the really thin servo wires that you sometimes see on these sort of connectors they're good chunky ones uh, and they need to be because this regulator is a 10 amp regulator and is capable of delivering 15 amp peaks so it's uh, perfectly suitable for your flyblest 90 uh, or 90 size application. Uh, but of course you can use it on smaller machines as well. Uh, it's relatively compact as you can see. I'll take this out of the packet in a moment so you can see the regulator itself. It comes wrapped in this little protective sheath. And then there you see the regulator itself. It's got a nice big heat sink on there. And uh, let me just see if I can come in a little bit closer on this so you can get a better look at it. Okay, there we go. So that's the regulator itself. As you can see, it's very, very nicely packaged. It's got some dip switches on the back here. These allow you to set the voltages that the regulator is going to supply and it's capable of supplying either 5.2 volts, 6 volts, 6.8 volts or 7.4 volts uh, and it's also got a, uh, a 7.3 volt <coughs> alarm selection or 6.5 volt alarm selection on it as well uh, on those uh, dip switches but uh, I'll come back to this in a little bit more detail uh, in a moment uh, and give you some more information on how to uh, wire this up, what the different connectors on here are for, uh, and how you would um, plug this to your receiver and your servos. Okay, so I've now connected this up the way it would be connected to, uh, up to, in order to be fitted into a model. So if let's bring this over here. Basically you can see that the cables that come supplied with the regulator you plug into the receiver outputs here and then these channels effectively plug directly into your receiver and on the receiver channel here you've got 5 volts um, and 5 amps worth of uh, output to go to your receiver and then you would match whatever channel you plug into your receiver on each of these with the servo which plugs into these ports here so if if you've plugged you know this top cable here channel one into your receiver channel one then you would plug the servo that you want to be on channel one into the servo one port 
on the regulator here. And then these servo ports here, these are the ones that are programmable for voltage, so you can set via the dip switches on the back, turn this over and there's a key to these dip switches on the back as to how to set these. Um, <clears throat> you basically set those dip switches for what output you want on these servo uh, power output here, because this is a dual channel linear regulator this, so you've got one regulator providing power to the receiver and one regulator providing power to the servos. The receiver one providing 5 volts, the servo one pro providing a configurable voltage um, which you set based on those dip switches. Now on the dip switches you've also got an alarm voltage that you set and that's the voltage that when your battery, your flight pack, reaches that particular voltage the regulator is going to effectively start beeping an alarm at you that you're at um, the lower voltage that you've set uh, via these dip switches. Now I've also plugged in the pin flag uh, which you can see uh, here so this is the pin flag and it's plugged into the switch channel here and that just works as the switch to turn the uh, regulator on or off and then the last thing is you've got an aux channel uh, which I won't be using and you've also got these two leads here. Now you'll see on the case that one is labelled BAT and one is labelled CHARGE uh, and that's because the battery one which has got the male DEANS connector on it that's where you plug your flight pack in and this is um, already wired up um, in the standard configuration for a DEANS connector so the red cable on the flat horizontal pin. Now if you're installing your DEANS incorrectly uh, and not at, to that standard and you plug them into this you're going to block the regulator so before you plug in just make sure that you actually have got your red on the spade flat connector horizontal connector on the Deans. Now the other lead <coughs> is a charge lead so you can plug your charger um, into this one and it will allow you to charge your battery whilst it's still fitted to your machine without unplugging it so that's um, all of the connectors uh, and the regulator and uh, it's a very very nice regulator, I've run these before, very reliable, uh, really nicely built, nice big heat sink on it to dissipate heat and they work very very well indeed, uh, very good regulator. So one of the questions that normally comes up with regard to regulators is what can you actually plug in to this regulator and what voltages will it run off of? Well the input voltage specification on this <coughs> says that you can run a 2 cell 7.4 volt LiPo but no more than a 2 cell. You can run a 6.6 .6 volt life cell or you can run a 6 cell 7.2 volt nickel metal hydride pack to power the regulator. So those are your input voltages, so effectively it will run from 6.6 volts through to 7.2 volts. Okay, so one last thing just to mention about this particular regulator, and I was just going back over the instructions and just checking that I'd covered everything, uh, and there is just one warning which is that uh, you can leave your battery plugged into the regulator but if you do that, um, you are still providing some power to the regulator and you will also still be lighting a little LED and providing power to this particular uh, pin flag switch uh, which instead that hole in the middle there is for mounting it to your frames um, with a screw if you want to or you can um, cable tie it to the frames or secure it with uh, Velcro or whatever you want to do but that hole there is actually for putting a screw in and mounting it to the frames if you want to. Uh, anyway, back to the point, um, if you leave your battery plugged into this, it is going to take a small drain voltage off of the battery. So if you're going to leave your heli on the shelf for a couple of weeks, you really do want to unplug your LiPo, otherwise, otherwise it's going to flatten it um, because of that um, small drain that's going to, going to be going through the LiPo all the time that it's plugged in. But uh, if it's going to be less than a couple of weeks and you've got uh, still got a good voltage in your LiPo, um, before you fly it again <clears throat> then you can probably leave it plugged in but I, I tend to err on the safety side with these and at the, the end of my days flying I always unplug uh, the LiPo so that there's no more voltage being drawn from it. Okay that's everything. I um, ought to mention as well that uh, these distributors, uh, <coughs> these regulators 
are distributed by Climeout uh, in the UK and uh, if you're outside of the UK um, then uh, by all means have a look at the uh, Griffin website to find out who your distributor is uh, and where you can get these from.